Hello and welcome to Limpsham CEV Academy. My name's Fiona Robertson and I am the Executive Head Teacher of Limpsham, East Brent and Mark, who are all Church of England schools. The three schools are part of the Wessex Learning Trust and we also have um, 13 schools that are now part of our trust who all work very, very closely together. All of our schools are Church of England schools, apart from Wedmore, but as such, we all have a Christian foundation. We work very closely with our local church, which is in Limpsham, St Christopher's. We also work closely with Reverend Kevin Wright, who comes in and does regular collective worship with the children. In these current times, however, we're doing a lot of things virtually and we still keep links with our church via Kevin and him doing collective worships with us. We do have close links with the church throughout the year, so we have lots of uh, religious festivals that we support. Uh, we go to the church at Christmas, we go to the church at Easter, uh, we have other times in the year, such as harvest in the autumn term, and we also have our leavers service that takes place in the church, normally around about uh, July. So, as part of the children being part of our school, we really do pride ourselves on building strong relationships. So, we are sited right in the heart of Limpsham community, and our school is based predominantly right next to the preschool. So we do have lots of people that start at the preschool and work their way through the first school and then obviously on to the middle school and ultimately to our secondary school in Cheddar, which is King's. Part of building close relationships with our community is about our parents and making sure that our parents feel welcomed and valued and what we like to do is invite parents in throughout the year so that they are part of their child's journey through school. We also like our parents to be part of celebrations to do with the children and we invite them in every Friday so that they feel part of their child's uh, celebrations, things that they achieve, and we like to do that on a weekly basis. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're having to think creatively about how we can involve our parents, but we're hoping that we can do a celebratory collective worship via Zoom. We do lots of celebrations with the children. We like them to feel valued, so we do give out certificates every week. We choose a citizen of the week. And every half term we choose a superstar so that children can celebrate why they've been chosen and they take home a trophy which they keep for half a term until the next half term when we choose another superstar. But the children really enjoy that part of um, celebration. Within the school, to help build strong relationships, we have what's called a school council which the children elect themselves. We also have digital leaders we also have Year 4 Buddies and they are responsible for making our reception children feel really valued and welcome and the Year 4s aspire to doing that and look forward very much to doing, doing that role when they become um, Year 4s. Um, we're going to move over now to talking about our curriculum. Hi, I'm Katie Turner and I'm Head of School here at Limpsham. Uh, supporting Mrs Robertson as she is overseeing three schools, as she mentioned at, at the start. So my role here is predominantly split between being in the classroom, so I am still teaching, um, and I currently teach a year two class at the school, but the rest of the time is felt helping with the leadership of the school. And I'd like to talk to you a bit about our curriculum. So at the start of every year, and then kind of biannually, we really strip back our curriculum and look at how we can make it as engaging and as enriching as possible and most of our curriculum comes from a topic question. So each class in the school, regardless of age and stage, has a topic question 
um, a starting point, if you like. And from that, we plan lots of different things that covers the national curriculum. So at the moment, in Key Stage 1, we are covering the, the statement, we are amazing, and the children helped to plan what we were going to teach. So although the topic question is, we are amazing, interwoven in that, we've got our science learning, our history and geography subjects are covered, we look at our art, our music, our PE, and it all fits under the one umbrella, and we use that umbrella to put up class displays, to share information with parents, um, and then alongside all of those subjects, which we call our foundation subjects, we have our core subjects that we have to teach, and of course those you may be a lot more familiar with are maths, English, phonics, and those at the moment, especially given the stage that we are um, in, in the current global situation, are key points at the start of school, and I would imagine they'll still be fundamental in, in September 2021. So those subjects, English, maths, phonics, are taught daily, if not twice daily at the moment at times. We put a big support package in place with those early reception years to look at phonics, and we follow um, a Jolly Phonics programme. We try and ensure that our writing and our English planning is linked to our topics so that children are aspiring to, to link all sorts of things in with their writing. So we try and engage reluctant writers with uh, science topics, geography topics. We'll write about historical figures. Um, only this week, our Key Stage 2 class um, set up um, Egyptian tomb in this hall and from that, they have done some wonderful creative writing. So we try and use our subjects all linked together to make it as engaging as possible. When we're not in the classroom, we have the outdoor learning, which really starts in those early years in preschool, which I'm sure um, Miss Evans and Mrs. Fry will talk about later. But the outdoor learning is, is huge for us at Limpsham. Um, we have a beautiful outdoors here. So we're very lucky that around our school, it is refreshing, it's engaging, the children love to be outside, but we also have an outdoor classroom which is just down um, at the edge of the village in a place called Compa Cops, and we use that termly with children to go down and learn those forest uh, school skills. So not only have we got the curriculum covered in school, we've also got it covered outside as well. Now we'd like to show you a lovely video that we made a couple of weeks ago, right at the start of term. We've got some year four children who would normally be showing you around the school if you were here today, but they have helped us put together a little video tour of our school, so we would love to share that with you now. Welcome um, to our school. We hope you enjoy the video. This is our hall where we have our lunch and PE and we ha have our collective worships in here as well. This is our room house. Let's go and see the meeting. This is the Phoenix class where year fours are taught by Mrs. Pennington. This is our library. We use, we use it for reading, clubs and phonics. This is our playground where we play with our friends. This is the Elves class where Year 2s are taught by Mrs Turner and Mrs Davidian. This is the Unicorns class taught by Mrs Evans. This is the Phoenix class where This is the tennis court where we play and do PE and behind is the field that we do sports day on. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming, coming on a tour of our school. We hope you enjoyed coming around. Hi and welcome back. 
Uh, I meant to say at the very beginning, please could we ask you to jot down any questions you might have uh, using the link that you've used to connect to us tonight. Thanks very much. Over to Miss Evans. Hello, um, I'm Amy Evans and I'm the early years lead in the school and I also teach reception and um, year one class. So we work really closely with preschool and with Gemma Fry, the teacher at preschool, who will talk in a minute. Um, and a lot of our learning is done through play in reception, so it's a link between preschool and the more formal years of school, so that there's a balance of learning for the children. We follow the early years foundation stage curriculum, which goes right from birth up to five years old. And the reason that we do a lot of learning through play is obviously that there is a lot of research that says that this is a good way and it um, enables children to become confident and independent learners. We're lucky we've got a classroom with an extension, so we've got plenty of space for the children to play, and there are different areas for them to access through different resources. We also have an outside area which is covered, so we can use that in all weathers, and we go outside every day, so the outside is a really essential part of our curriculum. And as Katie mentioned earlier on, we have Compul Cops, which we love to go to um, for our forest school lessons. And we would like to finish by saying that reception is a really important year. It's that link between preschool, moving on, preparing for later learning, preparing for those formal years, moving through the school. So it's one of those really key times at school, and that's why we work so closely with preschool and we talk regularly with each other so that we know we get to know the children really well before they even start in reception. So I'd like to hand over to Gemma, who will talk a little bit about preschool. Hello, I'm Gemma Fry and I'm the early years teacher at the preschool and I'm responsible for the teaching and learning of our very youngest children in the school. And as Miss Evans has already said, we work very closely alongside the school as well which really helps when we make the transition from preschool into school. We have been very lucky to have had an extension done to the setting over the summer holidays and that is now complete which is amazing because it's given us an extra space for the children and also a sleep room so that our youngest children have their own space in which they can sleep when they're tired. If you want to find out more about the preschool then please look on the school website and follow our link and there you will find a virtual tour of the preschool which will just showcase a little bit about how we learn in preschool. Our preschool is a very busy, very happy, very lively place to be and we really look forward to welcoming you. Thank you. Okay, so um, Mrs Robertson earlier um, mentioned about the relationship that we feel is important to build with parents and we, we give this message so frequently and we can never give it too much, really, because we now, more than ever, and especially given the circumstances that we've been through as a country recently, we know how important that bridge between home and school is. And now, more than ever, we're asking parents to be part of the school, be part of the journey, um, so that we can work together. We know, not only from research outside of the school, but we know from working here at the school, as we have done, that parents who are working with the school, who are engaging with events, that are engaging with what we ask parents to help us with, the outcomes for their children are much, much brighter and much more advanced. And we ask parents to be involved as best they can, but we also understand that for, for some parents, events like tonight, for example, may have been difficult to have, have attended. So we try, where possible, to offer a range of times, a range of dates. So we might do morning events, we might do evening events, we might have events in a virtual world at the moment, but we also have welcomed parents um, in quite a tentative way onto the school site in recent weeks because we want the parents to feel, to feel in touch with the school community. To build that relationship, especially if you haven't gone through our preschool or if you're new to the locality, which can quite often happen, we host lots of events in those early years so that we get to know you um, and that you can feel part of the school. Um, FOLD, which is um, our Friends of Limpsham School, is an organisation run by parents in connection with the school 
and they are amazing at fundraising for the school, setting up events that parents can feel part of, that the children in the community can feel part of, and from that they raise thousands and thousands of pounds for us, and they've they've got their AGM coming up this week, where they'll kickstart their ideas for the next year. So we ask parents if you are interested in helping with fundraising, come and join the Folds team, as they're a fantastic bunch. Uh, we've also got other curriculum-based events that we hold and we ask parents to attend. So we have information evenings at the start of every year. We've just gone through a cycle of those now. And every class teacher would typically have a meeting with the, with the parents as a collective group. We've done them this year via Zoom, but we would certainly hope that by the time your children join us, we will be back to having parents in the classroom. But we invite you in in September. We share information about the class and we hope that irrelevant of which year your child is in, you will attend those evenings and come and listen to the teacher and, and hear all about their, their year group plan. So we have those every year. We have parent consultations at least twice a year with the offer of a third one in the summer term if parents wish to have one. And at those evenings, we have a one-to-one -one conversation and we may share attainment information. We may share information that we've gathered about their emotional well-being, about progress that they've made, and we often share books. At least once a year we hope to have a wide variety of books to share with you and you and your child can sit through and look at those books. So those happen frequently. We have themed events, unfortunately at the moment they are slightly few and far between, but we high hope to at least once a term have an event where parents are invited into school, whether that be for a workshop to do some work with your children, whether that's to come and look. We've had an art gallery in recent months here in the school where parents came in and looked around the hall. Um, or it might be that it's an event in the morning or at the end of the day. So those events are strategically planned, although at the moment um, being done in a slightly new way, but we certainly hope they will be uh, back in force next year. We have other local community events that the school and parents very much feel a part of. So we'll have a Christmas fair, a summer village fair, um, school nativities, other performances that take place, and all of those um, are encompassing the school and the parents so that the children very much feel supported at both home and school. Um, we think now would be a great time to share with you some testimonials that some of our young and older children have shared. Uh, when we videoed the, the tour, we also interviewed the children, and I'm sure you'll find these um, really enjoyable to see. So we'd like to share some testimonials with you now. Because um, I'm good at it, and I know um, I know um, all the stuff I need to know about math. I like English and maths because I like adding all the numbers up. And um, English, I like writing stories. I like PE because I love running around. It's the learning. I enjoy playing with my friends and people looking after me. In the tennis court we've got um, a massive place where we can do loads of stuff there. I like the field. I like the company. Because um, there's a lot of fun activities you can do there. Yeah, yeah. The, the teachers were lovely and Saturdays. Yes, because, um, because we learn more things and if we get it wrong, we learn from that. We hope you enjoyed the testimonial uh, video. Um, I'd like to continue by telling you a little bit about our wraparound care. So when the children first start school, we do actually start them on a part-time timetable in reception. Um, I know that um, there may be some questions around that, which we can address. But we do like parents to be assured that even if a session finishes at 12, we can offer wraparound from that time. 
and that can run from 12 until 6 if necessary. So our breakfast club starts at quarter to 8 in the morning, so children are offered a breakfast and they can stay there until quarter to 9 when school actually starts. And then at the end of the day, at 3.25, we do run some after-school clubs, which, again, we don't tend to start in the first term when children start in reception, but by the spring, when they're a bit more settled, they could join an after-school club. Or, if they don't want to do any of the sports clubs, they can go straight in to wraparound care, and there they're given a snack, something um, to drink, and the preschool staff will be responsible for them until whatever time you would like to collect them. So sessions run, some parents collect at five o'clock, but it does actually run until six o'clock in the evening. So that's a little bit about our wraparound provision. We've all said what we'd like to say, and we'd just like to say thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we would like now to address any questions you have put forward and I know that some have already been submitted so we're going to answer those questions now for you. The first question is what do you offer in terms of settling in days prior to the September start? So Miss Evans, what do we offer in terms of settling in days when the children first start? Yes, we offer three visits usually in the summer term for the children to come into the reception classroom, usually for an hour, two hours in an afternoon, one with parents, and then two when they come on their own without the parents to feel um, a bit more independent, and that um, takes place in the summer term, and there are also other opportunities for children who are in our preschool to come and have a little look around as part of their preschool day but if you're new then we've got those three sessions usually that you can come and join us. The second question asks during the wraparound care provision who is to look after children, is it mixed age groups, how, what are the arrangements you put in place regarding coronavirus and how do they get from um, wraparound care into the classroom? Okay, so we've had a question about our wraparound provision, what, how, and what and how that works during this time of COVID, um, and also how the children get from school over to the preschool. So if I can just explain how that works. So parents book in advance when they would like to have um, wraparound care, so they would contact the preschool directly. Um, there is an application form that you can book sessions in advance and that can be um, obtained from the preschool or via our website. Um, the, the children then will, at quarter to nine, be brought over to the school by the preschool staff and they are walked to the gate that leads directly into the school and one of the teachers will be there to greet them so that they are actually handed over to a member of staff. At the end of the day, when it gets to 3.25, a member of the preschool staff will come over and they will visit each class in turn to collect the children. The preschool staff will then walk the children over to the preschool and it is the preschool staff that are responsible for the well-being of the children and they run the preschool with planned activities for the children from the school. During these times that we find ourselves, we practice vigilant hand washing to keep the children safe. They will do that before they actually go over to the preschool. And then what, what actually happens is they will stay in a part of the preschool which only the wraparound care children will access. So that's to keep them safe away from the other preschool children so that they have their own space. But while they are in there, they will continue to practice safe hand washing and making sure that if necessary, if they go outside, that they're sanitizing their hands. And really, everybody's responsible for keeping 
the wraparound children safe as well as the preschool children? The next question asks um, about school coming lessons and what the arrangements are for the children. Okay, so Mrs Turner is going to answer the questions around swimming lessons. Swimming lessons. So quite unusual, I think, for most first schools, certainly, if not primary schools, we dedicate swimming lessons every year for every child. So even from reception, and we don't skip any years, reception will have a term of swimming, year uh, one and two will have a term of swimming, and, and so it goes on. Unfortunately, at the moment, swimming pools are closed, but we wouldn't foresee that continuing, obviously, into September 2021. But at present, the reception children will swim in the summer term. So for your perspective, um, children, it would be summer of 2022. So we fund um, those sessions with funding that is um, given to schools to support uh, PE and well-being. And we subsidise quite heavily the teaching of swimming lessons. So the reception children would typically get 10 swimming lessons. Key stage one children in year one, two would get 10 swimming lessons. And then as we get slightly further up into the school, because of the restrictions on the, the length of the year, the key stage two children get six or seven swimming lessons each. But every year our plan is for every child to be offered a term of swimming. We currently swim at Breen Splash. And that's gone very well. We've been there for a number of years now. But if for any reason that wasn't to continue, we would find an alternative provider somewhere else. The next question asks, um, what the arrangements are in terms of uh, classes and year groups, so perhaps to give a, um, an hand that we've got, and whether they're mixed or individual. Okay, so um, we've had a question regarding our classroom structure and our year groups. So this year, we have quite a unique year, uh, it, most unusual because normally we have mixed classes and by that I mean we have a reception and a year one combined class. We normally have a year one and two combined class, a year two, three combined class and a year three, four combined class. And normally the way our classes are structured depends on the number of children actually coming in in September. So this particular year, we actually didn't have as many children coming in, which is quite unusual for Limpsham. And we were able to actually make a reception year one class. So quite unusually, we have a straight year two, we have a straight year three and a straight year four. So as I said, that situation is quite unique and normally we do work on the model of a mixed class setting and it does actually work really well in a small first school. Um, and a lot of our parents will talk about the advantages when a child has just joined in reception and they're literally just four years old, sometimes they need that extra year in that play-based environment just to build up their confidence so that when they move into year two, they're actually ready for a more formalised learning environment. Thank you. The next question asks, Okay, Mrs Turner, would you like to address the... I would. So we've had a question about extracurricular activities and after-school provision. Um, so we aim, endeavour every term to offer um, one an evening. So normally on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there will be a different activity offered. And those are split between physical sports and creative arts. So no term is the same, so it's hard to give a definitive answer. But before lockdown in March, we had a clay club of an evening... We had a Lego club, we had a multi-sports club, we had a gymnastics club and we had a team game or tennis club and that can vary, sometimes clay club is um, not on and we might have a drumming club. So they're all interspersed dependent on the members of the staff that we have available but we certainly hope to have at least some creative subjects and some physical sports. We can't, unfortunately, offer a huge amount of extra on top of those because of limit limitations on space. So we try and have one a night so that we can ensure that if it's wet weather, that the children can come into the hall. If we were to have two or three clubs running per night, then 
clubs would be cancelled more often and we know how important those clubs are for parents and for childcare. So we try and have one a night. With regards to extracurricular activities around dance and singing, we're very sad at the moment that we can't sing here. We're, we're doing our best with music and in fact we've, we've really coped well by learning about musicians and we've got a, a special musician every week that we're learning about because we can't sing loud and proud unfortunately. But things like dance is covered in our PE curriculum, so one term a year the children will study dance as part of their PE curriculum. I've mentioned gymnastics already, but our singing is covered in our um, collective worship and music time. But we also have in Key Stage 2 music tuition, which is provided by Somerset Music. So we have professionals in, and they alternate between year three and year four, and at the moment we're learning the ukulele. Um, and that's been quite a common theme for a couple of years now, and it's likely to continue. But Somerset Music may at times say, actually, we can now offer something different. So like I mentioned, we've had drumming, um, but ukulele has been a firm favourite at Limpsham for quite a while, and the children love to learn the ukulele. So we have that weekly for year three and four children as well. The next question asks um, for a full part figure on how many children there often are in classes in year one. Okay, so the question that's been asked is how many children are in classes or year groups? As I explained earlier, this is very dependent on how many children actually come into the school in September. Um, however, in the Key Stage 1, which is our reception Year 1 class, and our Year 2 class this year, we only have a maximum of 30 children per class. We don't have 30 in, in each of those classes because our numbers have actually uh, been slightly lower with children coming in. In Key Stage 2, we are able to exceed 30, but that very rarely happens. And if it does, it tends to be around about 31 or 32 children. We are restricted in one of our classes because it actually the, the maximum number it can hold is, is about 26 children. So um, the only class or year group that we do tend to exceed 30 is in our year 3-4 class. Okay, I, I can answer that. So the question that's been asked is about a holiday club. We're very proud at Limpsham, um, particularly at our preschool, that we can run a holiday club. Unfortunately though, due to the circumstances we find ourselves, we have found it a challenge to think about bubbles and organisation for holiday club at the moment. That's not to say though that in the spring term we may um, consider running a, a holiday club in February. We are following government guidelines. We did feel that it may involve too many crossover of bubbles because we have a lot of interest from other schools, not just from Limpsham. And unfortunately, we didn't want to take that risk for this half term in October, but we are certainly going to review that and think about it for February. And we do offer holiday club in all our half terms um, and our Easter holiday and our summer holiday. The only time that we don't offer holiday club is over the Christmas period. Two more questions just come in. Um, how often do children get to use the outside classroom? Okay, so Amy, would you like to answer that? Yes, um, so typically... Um, it could be once a week, it could be once a fortnight, but they will visit every half term. All the classes are different, so depending on what is being covered that week, that term, but all children will get the chance to visit the outdoor classroom every half term, I would say. And the final question for now um, is asked about trips um, for these class going school trips. Uh, yes, we've had a question about trips and how often they occur. Typically, we would have a trip at least once a term. Typically, in the autumn term as a whole school, we go to see a pantomime. Um, recent years, we've supported the Playhouse, but we've been to the Bristol Hippodrome in the past. 
And we use the trip to the pantomime not only to have a fantastic morning, which it always is, but to feed into our English topic. So whichever pantomime we're watching will figure somewhere in our learning of traditional tales. Then each class either buddy up with another class. So quite often Miss Evans and I in reception year one, two will go together all on a coach. Um, but it might be that Miss Evans has a specific trip and I have a separate one. But then on a second term, we will have at least one trip linked to our topic. Um, so in the past, we've been to at Bristol, we've been to the aquarium. In fact, shortly before lockdown, we went to the Wild Place project in Bristol. And then in the summer term, um, year fours would typically go on a residential and they stay away from home for a couple of evenings in Devon. And when they do that, the rest of the school, so reception to year three, would have another type of trip. Now, whether that's all of those year groups go together collectively or we might have people in to run sessions in school. We've had outdoor pursuits in school, but we've also taken them off site as well. So we try and do at least three a year. I would love to answer that question. So we've had a question about how we support and challenge children. So as with all schools, the school has to have a qualified teacher as SENCO, and that is me. SENCO means somebody who is strategically planning special educational needs requirements in the school, um, but we very much believe in, in the notion that all teachers are teachers of SEND. So although I will be heavily involved in children who go through our school with an identified special educational need, we are all teaching children with special educational needs. How we support them, it will completely depend on the need. It may be supported with wave three, so that is um, intervention away from the classroom, whether that's a targeted literacy intervention, whether that's emotional literacy work, it could be art therapy or play therapy for the traumatised child. So that's um, a really broad ra range of support. In the class, so wave, we call it wave one and wave two intervention, that will look very different depending on the need, but linked heavily to the rest of the class as well. So that might be differentiated worksheets, differentiated activities, that could be small group work with a support member of staff, small group work with a teacher. It could be that they have their WALT presented in a different way, or it could be that actually we write the WALT for them because they need to get on with their activity and the WALT is a barrier to their learning. So teachers will make adjustments where they see fit with my support in their classrooms. And I'm proud to say I think we manage that very, very well. And in a small rural school, when we do have a child with an identified special educational needs, that can be challenging because there are not many children, staff, resources around us, but we do a very good job of supporting each other with that. Um, and on the flip side, but not that dissimilar, we may have a child with a special educational need who also needs a lot of challenge with their academic studies. Those two things are not separate by any means. But a child who requires challenge, our mixed age classes support that fantastically. If we think a child needs additional challenge and if we think they're emotionally ready for that, they will often be in the class. Um, for example, um, a greater depth year two child may be in the year two, three class where there is an uh, obvious level of challenge with the peers around them at that higher level um, but if they're like this year in a, in a straight year group we would have differentiated learning we would have lots of problem solving and reasoning challenges we would set a higher expectation on them that actually we were expecting this amount from you because we know you can do it it might be that they have less support from an adult but typically the teacher will support all children it will be actually about the lesson that we're teaching so our outcomes here at Limpsham are very, very strong um, and we try and cover the wide range of abilities that we have um, and I'm very proud to say that I think we do that very well. But everybody's different. And one more thing, when teaching reception children start learning after-school activities like school clubs? Okay, so we've just had a question to ask when reception children can join in. We actually talked to parents about this and how they've settled in the autumn term because some reception children get very, very tired and we will have that conversation with you. More often than not, they're ready round about sort of spring um, half term. So we're talking round about January, February time that they're actually ready to be able to stay a bit longer. 
quite often when reception children start, it's a very long day for them. And I know some parents say, well, they're at preschool all day, they're used to it. Actually, it's quite draining for them when they first start school because they really are at it all day long um, and they do get tired. So if your child is responding well to staying a bit longer, then they can start an after school club um, as soon as the spring term. But again, we always talk to our parents and we'll agree with you when you and we both feel it's, it's appropriate for them to start. Okay, so we'd just like to say thank you for all your questions and uh, I hope we've managed to answer most of them. If you still have a question and you would like to talk to any of us at all, please feel free to either give the school a ring, you can always drop us an email and you're always welcome to come and visit. Unfortunately, at the moment, we can't invite you in while the children are in school, but we can always see you after school when the children have all gone and we can give you a tour. Unfortunately, not in the classrooms, but you can look around the school. So hopefully we've given you enough information to give you a taster about our school. We really look forward to hopefully seeing you if you're making a decision about coming to Limpsham School. And as I said, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions at all. Thank you very much for joining us tonight.